is architecture in a, in a globalized world and, and of course in, in particular how Scandinavian architecture will be relevant for the world and, and how the world is relevant for, for the Scandinavian context. And I think there's so much to, to, to do out there but I also think there's a lot to learn here from what's happening out there. I'm going to talk about architecture in 2030. I have been looking into the new technologies that are emerging. I mean, there, there are two major things that are going to change here, the way that we produce stuff and everything around it. And that poses a lot of challenges to uh, not just city planning and architecture, but to everybody as human beings and as societies and culture. How can we actually embrace that future? And to do that, we have to we have to look forward, but we have to have um, our tradition not as a burden, but actually as an innovator. So you, you use the the past as an innovator for the future, and I think that's all about it. It's about how can we be more open-minded in the future? Because if we just keep on doing what we're doing today, we will probably not be that needed. But I think it's all about you know who do we team up with? How do we how do we see ourselves in 10 years? And to do that, we really have to say, okay, what is the future? And can we predict some of the future? Maybe a little bit of it, but if we follow along with the future and are open-minded, I think we'll have a very, very strong point in five years, 10 years time. So I was approaching my little lecture on what, are, what is important in order to inspire uh, future architects uh, to do the work they're supposed to do uh, in a larger group of people where not one is making decisions where, but where the group is making a uh, decision. And that means group outside of architecture as well, it means including clients, it means including users. But the effect of that, what type of drivers could in the end be considered valuable drivers independent of cultural backgrounds?